on this episode of the Carolina Sports Guy. It's been a while, folks. Been in the process of a move. But I want to go ahead and get together. I want to kind of do an early 53-man roster breakdown. Now, we know, even going back to last year, that as soon as the 53-man roster is set, teams make their cuts. Players who have safely made the 53 get cut the next day. Someone news at it. So, take my 53-man roster with a grain of salt because we still have some preseason games. We're still at about 80-some players. It is just an early look at what I think may be the 53-man roster, some of the positives, some of the complicated issues that the Panthers have to decide. Before we get into today's video, make sure you subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Pound that like button, hit that bell notification to be notified of future videos like this on the Panthers. And by all means, folks, leave Uncle Chucky some comments. I love the dialogue. All right, folks, I want to kind of break it down. 53-man roster. The first thing we have to look at, and I've always kind of thought, when you do a 53-man roster, you can go ahead and take three people off. A kicker, a punter, and normally a long snapper. And a long snapper can be offensive line. They can play in a pinch. But you normally kind of keep those three specialists because kick returners, punt returners, gunners, whatever you want to call them, they normally have to play a multitude of positions from receivers to defensive backs to whatever it might be. So let's get the three out of the way. We know that the Super Bowl champion winning punter, Johnny Hecker, who played for the Rams, is going to be our punter. And I'm hoping he's going to continue a long list of great Panther punters we've had, maybe even being more consistent than the last couple we had. Number two, Zane Gonzalez. To me last year, one of the two or three bright spots this team had because we really struggled with Joey Sly. We did it with uh, Graham Gano, who seems to be doing well with the Giants, but he did miss some important kicks with the Panthers, even in the Super Bowl. But I really do feel that Zane Gonzalez has done a good job. And folks, shout out to the band, the long snapper. Okay. No, it's not going to be Travis Fletcher. He's already been cut. Mistake by rule last year in company. Should have taken Trey Smith, the offensive lineman from Tennessee, who's flourishing with Kansas City. We needed a lineman. But that's in the past. But we got to really give a shout out to our man, J.J. Jensen. Jensen, pay attention, folks. If Jensen starts or plays in 13 or 14 of these 17 games this year, he's going to be the all-time most games played by the Carolina Panthers player, surpassing, um, I believe it was a former kicker we had, and I'm trying to think of his name, uh, John Casey. So J.J. Jensen has a chance to do that. I'm hoping he can stick around a little bit longer. If not, we'll have to find ourselves another long snapper. But definitely drafting Travis Fletcher was not the answer. Okay, now, I'm kind of looking at my roster real quick here. And I have a total of 26 offensive players and a total of 24 defensive players. And normally it's 25 and 25, and that can change. And I'm going to kind of give you a few guys who are on the fringe of the practice squad. Okay, first, let's look at the all-important quarterback battle. We're looking at four people. I think we'll only keep three. Now, ideally, I think the Panthers would love to find a taker for Sam Darnold, even if they had to eat half a salary. Uh, just because, you know, paying him the $18 million plus is a lot. And I think they've already determined that, you know, Baker Mayfield's going to be the starter. Step but next. In, next. in saying that, let's kind of look at the situation. We're going to go ahead and pencil in Sam Darnold as our number, I mean, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield is our number one starting quarterback. And unless he struggles or something happens or Sam Darnold just comes out and does something spectacular, which I don't see, Dar uh, uh, Baker Mayfield will be our starting quarterback. Now, if we do not find any takers for Sam Darnold and we are stuck with him on the roster because might as well keep him in here because if we're going to have to pay him $18 million plus, he might as well be on the roster. He'll be number two. Now, a lot of people have P.J. Walker as a third quarterback. If he sticks at number three and we try to put Matt Corral, who's the rookie, and get him on the practice squad, it's going to backfire because somebody will he'll pick him off and he will be on somebody's roster. So in my opinion, P.J. Walker's the odd man out. If they want to put him on the practice squad, if he's eligible, they'll do that. But I think it's time for P.J. Walker to go. So it's going to be Mayfield, 
Darnold, and the third quarterback will be Matt Corral, trying to groom him. I don't see a lot of playing time from him unless somebody gets injured or hurt or just the team really starts falling apart and the quarterbacks suck and they get him out there. All right, number two, let's look at our running backs. Without a doubt, Christian McCaffrey is going to be our feature back. If he stays healthy, him catching balls out of the backfield, just his ability to run between the tackles, like I said, the only thing that will keep him off the field other than needing rest is going to be injuries. Number two. Now, it's a toss-up for me. Between Dante Foreman from Texas, uh, the Longhorn from years ago that played for, I believe, I think he played for the Houston Texans, and Chuba Hubbard, who we drafted last year. I've got uh, uh, Foreman um, being the number two running back, and I got Chuba Hubbard number three. And I think all will carry is three running backs. I do think we will take um, Brown. We'll take the kid from UAB that we uh, kind of got as an undrafted free agent last year, Spencer Brown, and we'll try to stick him on a practice squad again. I don't see us carrying four running backs. I think we'll just have the three, but we will put one on the practice squad. Now, wide receiver. I think this is one of the deepest receivers uh, group that we had. Number one is going to be DJ Moore without a doubt. Number two is going to be Robbie Anderson. Those are your two starting receivers. Now, three, I think Rashad Higgins coming over from Cleveland, and especially him having a, a relationship with Baker Mayfield. He's going to be your third receiver, and I think he's going to do well. Uh, number four, I got Terrace Marshall Jr. Now, some people have Shy Smith rated a little bit. I just feel like uh, Shy Smith getting the trouble he did and the fact the durability issue, I just think Terrace Marshall Jr. will be the number four guy. And saying this now, I think Shy Smith's number five with his kick returning, punt returning ability, and the fact that, yeah, he has shined and looked really good. If he can stay good, stay out of trouble, stay healthy, Shy Smith will definitely get a lot of playing time. Now, six, seven, and eight, I think we'll keep eight guys. Six will be um, Roberts, um, who's the guy we're going to get, we got from the Chargers, who's going to, Andre Roberts, who's going to be kick returning. That's going to be his main focus. That's what we're going to bring him in for. That's why he'll make the 53-man roster, and he will start on game days. But as a receiver, I mean, as a kick return specialist, the only time we're going to see him as a receiver is somebody gets hurt or somebody's dropping balls. But his main ability is going to be returning kicks. Now, 7 and 8, I think they're going to basically – Unless somebody gets hurt or doesn't do well, let's just say Shy Smith or Terrace Marshall Jr. struggle, or like I said, somebody gets hurt, I think we'll see Brandon Zilstra at number seven. And then finally, number eight, I'm seeing C.J. Saunders. C.J. Saunders can return kicks. I think he's kind of one of them guys who's getting better. We keep him around long enough, he can flourish. And I do have him making the roster, but those are the eight guys that I see being receivers for the Panthers. Now, let's get to the all-important offensive line. I'll give you my five starters. Taylor Moten is going to play right tackle without a doubt. I do believe that um, your right guard is going to be um, Corbett. The guy we got, I think it's Andrew Corbett we got from the Rams who played in the Super Bowl. I think he's going to start, and no doubt in my mind he'll do a good job. Now, at left tackle, Akeem Kwanu the rookie from NC State. Now, that could change. Brady Christensen's look really good at tackle, and I would not be alarmed, upset, or hurt if he turns out to be a good tackle. I'd rather have a Quanu as our, as our left tackle and move Brady Christensen in at guard. But either way, to me, a combination of a Quanu at tackle, Brady Christensen at guard, or putting Brady Christensen at left tackle and putting a Quanu at left guard, either one I'm happy with. I know a lot of people won't definitely want a Quanu as the left tackle, but if Christensen's going to outperform him or right now, at least this year, seems to be more set up playing tackle, let's just get him on both fields on the left side. Now, this is where it gets tough. I thought Bozeman, um, uh, Brandon Bro Bozeman coming in from the uh, Ravens, was going to start at center. Right now, it looks like Pat Elfline's got the upper hand. Now, a lot of people didn't like Pat Elfline's game last year, just like Cam Irving. I think Cam Irving is not going to make the roster this year. But Elfline is a guy that I think can start at center and do an admirable job. I think he'll be the starting center. If he struggles, Bozeman will go in, and I have Bozeman in the number two center. Now, number two guard, Michael Jordan. We got from the Bengals last year. I think he can play adequate enough, and he'll be a decent backup. I also like um, um, 
Deontay Brown. I think he will be um, I know Deontay Brown coming from Alabama last year and we drafted. I think he's good enough to keep on this roster and be a backup guard, and hopefully he'll get better. And then the last guy, the nine that I see we're bringing in, is um, Cade Mays, the rookie from Tennessee, who can play guard or tackle. And I think definitely we've, we've got to keep him on this roster. He's looked good. I don't think we can take a chance in cutting him. Now, that does mean I'm putting a guy like Dennis Daly on the practice squad if he's eligible. But I would put him there. I don't think he's going to make the roster. I definitely think um, – uh, some other guys are going to get cut, like I said, like Cam Irvin. They're not going to make this roster. Now, moving on to our de defense. Let's first look at our defensive line. I'm going to say that, okay, your starting offensive line is going to be Brian Burns without a shadow of a doubt. The other defensive end, Marquise Haynes. Now, backing up Haynes and Burns is going to be your tour gross Matos. It's time for him to shine. By this time, we kind of really wanted to have him as a starter, as, a, 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 as the opposite side of Burns. But Haynes has really developed well, and Gross Matos would be a nice specialist to bring in. Uh, another guy defensive end is the rookie, Barno, that we got from Virginia Tech. He's looked good in camp. I think we've got to keep him on the roster. Remember, defensive ends, they tend to be late bloomers. They take a little bit of time to develop. Now, defensive tackle-wise, okay, Dwayne Brown. Uh, is going to be one. He's going to be our starter in the middle. And I believe you can actually put, in my opinion, Davion Nixon, the rookie from last year. I think he can start. Now, Matt Ioannidis that we got from Washington, he's probably going to be the starter. But I think before the season's over, Nixon's going to move in and start. And we're also going to have guys like um, Hoskins. Phil Hoskins can probably play a little bit. And um, Bravion Roy is definitely going to get some playing time. So those are the nine defensive linemen that we will have that make the squad. Um, now, I'm also going to look at our linebackers. And this, to me, folks, is the most alarming part of our group. We've been blessed with linebackers of this organization over years, from Sam Mills to uh, John Beeson to Dan Morgan to Luke Keekley. Um, just, you know, uh, Thomas Davis, just a slew of guys. And we don't have that linebacker core we once did. We really need a guy, especially in the middle. So our, I've got five linebackers sitting, sitting on the roster. I think we're going to need six. So this is a position I think we might pick off someone of another team. And one of the guys I named today will probably be cut into place, either put on a practice squad or we won't see him again. But the starters at the linebackers I think will be Shaq Thompson, Number one, Frankie Louvu and Littleton. Littleton is a guy that played college football, I believe, with Shaq Thompson. He's been around, had a cup of coffee, I believe, with the Raiders or the Chargers, and I believe he will start for us. Now, uh, Damian Wilson is going to be a guy who's probably going to make the roster and be a backup linebacker. And Brandon Smith, a rookie from Penn State, I see him developing and him put him on the practice squad. I think we're going to give him a chance at special teams and be a backup linebacker, and hopefully he can develop quickly. Uh, Penn State's always been known for linebackers, so that can be very resourceful and helpful. All right. To me, our deepest position on this team, and to me, was the hardest one. At one time, I had 11 guys, folks. I've still got 10. It's probably going to go to 9. But it's our defensive backs. We know Jeremy Chin. Is going to pay, play safety, a start in safety. Now, to me, I think we could do what we did our rookie year with Jeremy Chen. We could put him at linebacker, being that we're razor thin there, and he probably will play some joker, some linebacker at points in time, depending on injury, depending on the guy's struggle. But I know they want to keep him at safety. Uh, the other starting safety is Xavier Woods. We got coming over from Minnesota. I think Justin Burris will be the backup safety in this situation. Um, now, our corners, I do believe, is going to be J.C. Horn, without a doubt, and Dante Jackson. We'll have C.J. Henderson will be the third corner that will work out. And let's not forget Keith Taylor, the rookie from last year, who played really well. I think he's also going to make the roster. So that kind of leaves us with about seven guys there. I still think you're going to find room for a guy like uh, Sean Chandler can make this roster. Wouldn't be surprised if he got cut. I wouldn't be surprised if he made the, uh, the roster. I, I like Hartsfield. Hartsfield, um, a guy that we've had for a couple of years, 
And the thing about Hartsfield, you can stick him at safety, you can stick him at corner, you can stick him at nickel. I like his play as a defensive back, and I think he's very useful, and that's why I do think Hartsfield will stick on this team. Um, Sam Franklin is somebody. Played for or Matt Rule, I believe, at Temple, and I think Sam Franklin can stick on this roster as well. But I would not be surprised if Steve will get into these positions at defensive back that he could end up being cut. I hope he stays. That's also going to leave me talking about Kenny Robinson. I thought Kenny Robinson's played well enough. If he gets cut, maybe he can make the practice squad. I could see him beating out Franklin or Hartsfield. It could happen. But in my opinion, um, Kenny Robinson's going to be the one that goes. Maybe we can put him on the practice squad. I do not think Stanley Thomas Oliver will make this roster and maybe not even make the practice squad. And we drafted a, a Keon Barnes, I believe, from Baylor as a safety. I think we'll have to stash him on the practice squad because this, this is probably one of our deepest positions is at safety. And I also wanted to say, linebacker, one guy that can make the squad, could be practice squad if he's eligible, is Julian Stanford. I do think that if we do go with six linebackers, he could be guy number six. If he's got practice squad eligibility and we're not deep there and he's not good enough, that's where he'll end up if he doesn't get cut. And, folks, the one position I did not mean to leave out, and I'm looking down on my list, is tight end. And last year that was the one thing that upset me during our 53-man roster. We stuck with, like, six tight ends. I thought it was a joke. And... Number one guy is Tommy Trimble, without a doubt. He's going to start. Opposite of him will be Ian Thomas. And Ian Thomas has a significant playing time. We brought him back for a reason. I like his game. Not as much as Trimble, but he's older and more experienced. And then I'm giving Giovanni Ricci, who can play like that halfback position, tight end and gadget plays. I'm going to let him. Last year I was kind of hard on him, but I'm going to give him the nod. Um, as far as Colin Thompson goes, I've got him on the practice squad. But I would not be surprised if Colin Thompson was not the third tight end and maybe Ricci goes down to the practice score on his cut. So it's going to be between one of those two guys, in my opinion. Now, folks, what do you think? Is there somebody on the camp? Because I know there's going to be somebody who's going to shine, who wasn't drafted, or we're going to pick up late from a team that gets cut, and they're going to make this roster. And then, of course, there's going to be that one or two guys on this roster who are like, oh, my God, like if a Brandon Zilstra was to get cut. Or you just look at a, a guy, and I'm just throwing it out here, like a Dante Foreman running back. I, I think he's definitely going to be number two. But if you have somebody shine, somebody like that can go down. Um, if Darnold's not picked up, we have to keep him because of paying him the money. And if Mayfield struggles, we can bring him in. But it would be a tragic mistake. In my opinion, if we let Matt Corral go and try to stash him on a practice squad, it's not going to work. And that's why we've really got to let go of P.J. Walker. I think it's time. Um, but anyway, folks, that's my prediction for the 53-man roster. You can go ahead and argue. I'd love to hear some comments on what you guys think. I'm sure I've left out a couple people that might have impressed y'all who've been to training camp. And maybe there's a couple people I've added on this list that you think just aren't good enough to make this roster. So let me know. We'll come back and revisit it as we make these cuts. And then by then, with the 53-man roster, we can ba basically do the starters. We can do more of a depth chart instead of just a 53-man roster. So, folks, what do you think of today's video? Please leave me some comments. Uncle Chucky loves the feedback. I love that commentary. But make sure you subscribe. It's free of charge. Pound that like button. Hit that bell notification. And, folks, hey, more, subscribe to this because there's more Panther videos on the way. And we'll see you next time on another episode of... Wow. 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 Wow.